So, interesting weather we're having, right? 80 to... <clears throat> How's everybody feeling this morning? It's kind of cold in here. You want to bump up the heat a little bit, or are you guys good to go? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good week for me. My uh, employer gave me Friday off for mental health awareness. And so I was aware of the beautiful coastlines in Oregon, uh, which was well appreciated. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. So the last three weeks or so, we've been kind of talking about you know uh, equality and uh, the pastoral roles of, of uh, women in ministry. And uh, my wife shared with me that she's really appreciated this series. Although I informed her that we we're moving on to something else, um, so uh, we're going to do that. So sorry, but uh, hopefully, hopefully the the time spent was, if nothing else, uh, stimulating of thought and provoking, and uh, just want to encourage people to be open to being challenged, and uh, you know, working that spiritual and intellectual muscle. And, you know, resistance training if necessary. But, you know, just being open to it. And it's okay to say no thank you. As my wife will tell me, that's a complete sentence. But just being able to hear and receive is a good thing. <clears throat> Primarily the reason why we're changing topics is today is uh, the day of Pentecost. And so we're going to be talking about Pentecosting. Um, today we're going to open with uh, a reading from Psalms. And it is Psalms 104. And we're going to start off in verse 24 as we read. So here we go. Lord, how many are your works? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. There is the sea, great and broad, in which are swarms without numbers, animals both small and great. The ships move along there, the Leviathan, which you have formed to have fun in it. They all wait for you to give them their food in due season. To give to them, uh, they gather it up. You open your hands, they are satisfied with good. You hide your face, they are terrified. You take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created. And, you're, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my praises be pleasing to him. As for me, I shall rejoice in the Lord. May sinners be removed from the earth and may the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Let's open a prayer. Father God, yes, we bless the name of the Lord. We bless you. We praise you. We give thanks to you. We are grateful for your favor, for uh, your focus on us, that we may not be forced to tremble, that you are in everything, that you are with us. There is such peace and assurance in knowing that you are here with us. Father God, we invite you into this service, into this message, into our hearts, into our lives. Uh, and we just pray that all that we do is glorifying to you. It's not about us. We're just grateful to be a part of your story. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So when I read this psalm, there's a lot going on. The two words that jump out at me are providential grace. Providential grace. Having taken theology recently, uh, we talk a lot about prevenient grace, the grace that goes before 
um, the Holy Spirit working in people's hearts and preparing them to, to hear the gospel. Uh, basically, it's the Holy Spirit stacking up all the dominoes so that when somebody walks up and bumps into one of them, the whole plan of the Holy Spirit goes into action. Um, and then we feel like we've done something when all we did was bump into a domino. But there's, there is the grace that goes before. But this is talking about the providential grace. This is the grace that binds and holds and maintains order throughout all of the universe. There are universal rules that say, or laws that say that things uh, devolve into chaos. You know, order isn't normally preserved. Praise God, we serve a God of order, you know, a God of um, uh, order, yeah. And so this providential grace is the thing that keeps the tides on a cycle, that keeps the sunrise and the sunset, keeps the seasons. It's what feeds the animals of the field so that they don't have to worry. It's, it's, it's what gives us comfort. And <clears throat> this Holy Spirit is in all of that. His hands are everywhere. It's touching all of these things. God is, is everywhere and in everything. He is in us just as much as we'll allow him to. So verse 35 says, uh, May sinners be removed from the earth, and may the wicked be no more. That seems a bit dire. But it's it, you know, always a matter of perspective and being, uh, I don't know, trying to be the optimist in all things. It doesn't mean God, we're asking God to smite all the sinners because we were there too. Um, you know, another way perhaps to lessen the population of sinners is for us to get busy sharing the gospel with them so that the Holy Spirit has something to work with. So yes, let us strive to helping the Holy Spirit do Holy Spirit work, which is to uh, remove the sinners and the wicked, because the other way that's going to happen is Judgment Day. You know, sooner or later it's going to happen, but let us help, you know, limit the people that are going to be um, found guilty and sentenced and condemned as we can. So we're, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and, you know, the psalmist talking about how the Holy Spirit is everywhere and in everything, which brings us to Pentecost, where, you know, the people finally get to experience the Holy Spirit in a real personal way. And so we're going to read uh, today from Acts uh, 2, 1 through 21, and actually I'm going to read uh, 1 through 8 and then skip to 12 and then finish it off, but we read, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a noise like a violent rush of wind came in from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and tongues that looked like fire appeared to them distributing themselves, and a tongue rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with different tongues, or yeah, in the, with different tongues, as the Spirit had given them the ability to speak out. Now, there were Jew, uh, Jews residing in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under the heavens. And when the sound occurred, the crowd came together, and they were bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in their own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each hears them in their own language to which they were born? And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others were jeering and saying, Ah, they are full of sweet wine. But Peter, taking his stand with the other eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, know this. Pay attention to my words, for these people are not drunk, as you assume, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall be that in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, 
and your old men will have dreams. And even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And I will display wonders in the sky above and signs in the earth below, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. So it says that the Holy Spirit rested on each of them, um, which kind of ties in with the last three weeks because it goes to each and every one of them. There was no segmentation. There wasn't any different you know, tongues for different people. There was no division. And this is, you know, this is basis, or this forms my understanding of God, how there's no difference between any of us. You know, we either serve and submit to the Lord, and we allow the Holy Spirit to rest on us, and we are, you know, channels of the Holy Spirit, or we don't. And so the Holy Spirit is poured out on all of us, and um, on all mankind, man and woman alike, old and young alike. Uh, there, there is no inclusion or exclusion. It's just everybody. And when I was reflecting on this, it kind of dawned on me that, you know, I believe the Holy Spirit also dwelled on people of other abilities and those that were physically sound as well. So a lot of times we try to segment up between male and female and, and race and creed and, and financial status. <clears throat> But I think the Holy Spirit is also resting on and residing in those are that are utterly abled, you know. <clears throat> and so I was thinking about this, and, and in addition to that, I think, you know, we were just talking before the service about um, the United States dealing with border crises and people flooding in. But it's also important to remember that the Holy Spirit is resting on people that have citizen status and those that don't have citizen status. And praise God, the Holy Spirit is going to use whoever the Holy Spirit needs to use and wants to use, as long as they're willing to, to submit. And so whenever we see ourselves classifying other people or putting ourselves in any form of classification, we need to be aware that we're all one class in the eyes of God. And we need to treat each other with the same love of Christ that we're receiving ourselves. And so <clears throat> there are some that say, that may say that, you know, I'm physically weak. My vision is going. My hearing is going. I have, you know, strength is slipping from my hands. Um, what, what can the Holy Spirit do with me? You know, how can I serve? How can I be a channel, you know, a mechanism for the Holy Spirit? And I really think that's the wrong question to ask. Um, I think the correct question to ask is, what can the Holy Spirit do through me if I allow it? If I say yes? Because any limitations you perceive are not limitations of the Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit can use anybody and, and I, and when I was reflecting on this, I kind of wondered if um, some people who have other abilities, I wonder if somebody who was, say, visually impaired, you know, fully blind, I wonder if the Holy Spirit is able to show them visions and dreams that are unimpaired by their experiences and the things they've already seen. I kind of wonder if somebody of... Uh, lesser mental acuity and reasoning abilities, if the Holy Spirit is able to reveal spiritual things to them that I can't grasp because to me it's unreasonable. It, 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 it's nonsense. You know, so I, I kind of wonder that sometimes the things that we rest strongest on might be things that prevent the Holy Spirit from really working in us. And, uh, and for the reason why not to dismiss or discount anyone, because they, they may be channels for the Holy Spirit that we wish we could be, but they don't have the limitations and restrictions on them. And so, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, our physical limitations 
our, our social categories, our self-assigned classifications are not limitations on the Holy Spirit. Um, we <laughs> are the only limitation on the Holy Spirit at times. Um, it says, um, you know, I thought of a, a, a visualization experiment with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit indwelling. And I visualized the Holy Spirit as a body of water, right? And us being a submarine floating around in that body of water. And I think for most of us, we have our watertight doors firmly secured and there ain't no way the Holy Spirit's getting in us, right? But then Jesus, but then Jesus comes along and with a combination of work of us saying yes and, and his might and strength, we start cracking that seal on the watertight door and it allows the Holy Spirit to come in and fill us. And then as we uh, experience that, you know, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we can call that as um, salvation. We can call it instant sanctification, or initial sanctification. We can call it reconciliation. It's that moment where we are one with God because God is allowed into, inside of us again. And then furthering that, that visualization of the, the submarine, <clears throat> just because you open the outer hatch, you know, all the compartments of that submarine are still watertight and secured. And so that's when life begins is when we start going compartment by compartment and we allow, you know, with the Lord's help, the ability to open up that watertight door and let the Holy Spirit start filling all the compartments. And praise God and God willing, at the end of this, we become a vessel of the Holy Spirit. We are all Holy Spirit throughout all of our chambers and compartments. And, and that's what we want to experience. We want to experience what they had at Pentecost. But in order to have that, you have to fully say yes without reservations, without holding on to, you know, except for this compartment, you know. Uh, we just have to let it all go. And the important thing to remember is, but then Jesus, because that really is the beginning of all uh, fundamental changes. As we continue to say yes to God, you know, and the compartments are filled, we become more Christ-like, we become more sanctified, you know, trying to strive towards that, that point of full sanctification or perfect sanctification. Um, now, prior to this, Jesus met with the followers in the upper room, and one of the things he says to them is, receive the Holy Spirit. So he tells them, you know, I'm sending you something. I'm sending you a gift, but you have to receive it. And I thought it was good to, once again, look at the definition of the word receive. Because for me, it gives a little bit more um, depth to it. And so the, the, the definitions are take hold of, grab. I like that. Grab hold of the Holy Spirit. Grasp acquire, obtain possession of something, receive, accept uh, an object or benefit. Um, I don't know about the tax thing. Uh, select, choose, prefer, come to believe, accept. Behavior is true. The Holy Spirit, you know, I've, I've heard it said, and I like this saying, God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on us. We have to invite and we have to receive, and then we have to grab hold of and hang on to and just enjoy the ride as the Holy Spirit works in our lives. So many of us doubt um, about our usefulness in the kingdom work. We lack confidence. There is uncertainty. Um, it's important to remember, and I've said it before, we'll say it again, you are worthy you are worthy because of you're worthy of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because of Jesus Christ making us worthy. So it's not a matter of how you feel about yourself, about your self-perceived worthiness. If you have Christ, you're worthy. You're worthy of that Holy Spirit working in you. 
you just have to start saying yes more and more often. And sometimes when the Holy Spirit works, it's a really subtle thing. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will just work through you in an amazing way. And it's not until much later you realize, wow, that was pretty awesome. Um, sometimes all we really, really need to do is simply say, here I am, Lord, send me. With an open and receptive mind and heart, and then stand back in amazement at what he does through us. So I wanted to also read from uh, Philippians 2, 4 through 7, and it says, Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ, who, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant and being born in the likeness of man. I think this phrase of, but emptied himself, is something we must emulate in our, our lives. And so, as we strive to try to empty ourselves, here's another visualization. Visualize that you have a big freezer at home, big chest freezer, right? And inside this big giant chest freezer, you have, it's filled to the brim with frozen, freezer burnt, spoiled peas, right? Peas, peas, that's right. Frozen peas, ruined, rotten, horrible. And then somebody comes along and says, I've got half a side of beef I'd like to give you. And it's like primo beef, you know, really good, aged, you know, tender. What do you do? I think the, the choice is obvious. You expel, you empty out all the rotten, spoiled stuff, and you replace it with filet mignons, with prime rib, with porterhouse. You replace it with all the good stuff. Expel the rotten and take in the good. And I, I relate to food analogies. So for me, <laughs> um, you know, the Holy Spirit is the good thing. It's what I desire. It's what I want. I just got to get the rotten stuff out of there. You know, I got I to gotta just purge so that the Holy Spirit has some place to go. You know, there's some simple truths in life. You know, physics say that two things can inhabit the same space at the same time. So we want the Holy Spirit, but we want our garbage too. We got to get rid of the garbage. Um, and sometimes it's hard for people to, um, to get rid of the spoiled, rotten stuffs in our lives. It, it, you know, it's, it might be spoiled and rotten, but, you know, but it's our spoiled and rotten. You know, we're, we're comfortable with it. You know, my, my parents gave me that spoiled and rottenness, you know. You know, I have three generations of abuse. You know, I'm going to hold on to that spoiled and rottenness. And it's really hard to let it go. But you just have to be strong enough to bend the knee sometimes. You have to be strong enough to be a true servant and let it go. Uh, and again, once we empty that, that container, we receive something that is infinitely more precious than that rottenness. So the primary message today is that the same Holy Spirit that the psalmist talked about that is providential and working in everything and among everything is also the same Holy Spirit that came in the form of lips of fire on the day of Pentecost. It's the same Holy Spirit that's here in this church today. And it's the same Holy Spirit that can help guide our actions and bring us closer to Christ day by day by day. Amen. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit can act, actually impact this world through the church, which is us. And we need to be a part of that. Um, let me read uh, 1 Corinthians 12. 3b through 13 and it says therefore 
I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is accursed. And no one says, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there were various uh, varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there were varieties of ministries, and the same Lord. Uh, these are the varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by one Spirit. And to another the effects of ministry, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. For just as one body, uh, just as the body is one, and yet has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though they, may, they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we are all made to drink of one Spirit. So words of wisdom, knowledge, uh, faith, healing, effects of miracles, prophecy, distinguishing spirits, tongues, these are just some of the gifts that are available to us. And they're gifts that are not broken out by, in my opinion, anything you've done to deserve them. You know, I believe God gives you skills and abilities, and then you get spiritual gifts that will be leveraged by the abilities He's already given you. And so um, we just need to be welcoming and inviting to all these things. So, how often do we actually pause and ask ourselves, you know, what are the gifts that God has given me? More importantly, how am I applying those gifts for His glory, for His kingdom, for the growth of His church? You know, how have I been altered or, or how are these changed? And I do think that sometimes, you know, the gifts come with seasons. Like you may have a gift of prophetic word, but then years later, maybe it's about words of wisdom or maybe it's Tuesday, it's words of wisdom. You know, I don't think we get locked into, personally, I don't think we get locked into, you know, this gift or that gift. I think as long as you're receptive, the Spirit's going to use you as you need to be used. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage you guys to just prayerfully ask, you know, Lord, what are my gifts? Help me put those into action for your glory. So I know that there are many times when my wife and I will be talking about topics. I, I bring you in almost every week. Sorry about that. Um, but we'll be devouring or talking about topics, whatever they might be. And, um, and I'll make a comment. And uh, like a couple of days later, she'll say something like, I've really been thinking about that thing you said. And um, yeah, it's really been impactful. I really appreciate it. And of course, I take the praise and gratitude. And then I say, what did I say? <laughs> more, more often than not, I actually remember saying it, but that's not guaranteed. But sometimes I'll say, that sounds like something I would say, but don't really remember saying it. But the important thing is, you know, I think there are times when the Holy Spirit will very subtly use us to say things that we think, where did that come from? Well, it didn't come from me. I just think I was a receptive antenna. I was an antenna that was able to receive it and then put it into motion. And, um, and, and I love that, that. And I think we can do that more and more often if we're just we're tuned in to the right frequency to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us. And um, yeah, thank you. Um, So, yeah, so along that lines, I think at the next slide I have a quote up here. This is what, one of my favorite quotes nowadays. 
and uh, by Voltaire, and it says, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. And so I, I think I shared this with you recently. And I love this. And, and the reason I put this in here is a lot of times, I've, more often than not, I feel like the Holy Spirit works for me, not when I'm on a soapbox telling people what to do or saying this is the answer. I think more often the Holy Spirit works through me when I very gently say stuff like, have you considered this possibility? Or what do you think about this instead? Asking questions. And for me, I think when the Holy Spirit allows me to present the question rather than my answer, it's kind of like the Holy Spirit hands me a seed and I put it in the soil and the Holy Spirit comes by and nourishes it and waters it and then produces an answer for that person. So it's not even like it was my question that was the seed, but you know, it, the question helps the person come to their own flower, you know, their own understanding. And I think that's a good model for us is just to be uh, questioning or offering questions or, or offering guidance rather than trying to say, this is right, this is wrong. You know, the church, there are so many self-professed Christians out here that feel right. And they, they wield that, that understanding like the double-edged sword, except they're cutting everybody. <laughs> Um, and, and sometimes a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more Holy Spirit led, you know, asking of questions and, and offering um, possibilities. And let the Holy Spirit take it from there, you know, let the Holy Spirit take it from there. So in, in 1 Corinthians, it also says, each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, for the common good. And I think that goes exactly to what you were talking about earlier, Ray, where you have this young man who's watching a TV show that might be spiritually stimulating and might uh, lead to asking bigger questions, which is a good thing. But it's not fellowship. It's not coming together, you know, as God's people. And, and I believe when we read this verse that says the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, for me, demonstrates that the Holy Spirit works best when God's children are together, fellowshipping with one another. I don't think that the Holy Spirit is going to give you a phenomenal, wonderful gift so that you can lock yourself in a cave and share it with nobody. You know, the Holy Spirit's going to give you something to share. And so how do we share the gifts? We come together in fellowship. We, we interact with each other. We, we ask, you know, how was your day? What are you doing? You know, what can I pray for you? We come to men's breakfast and we eat bacon. Um, we come to women's fellowship and we do whatever they do, which is not inv involving bacon. Um, but the point is, we invest ourselves in each other's lives and we get intertwined. And that, I believe, is when the Holy Spirit will be flowing through us because it's about the common good of His church is where the Holy Spirit really flourishes. And so you're not going to get that watching YouTube videos or online streaming. It, it, it comes from relationships. And whatever we can do to better foster relationships among us, we're open to it, you know. And, and so that also includes inviting those people out there to come join us so that we can have relationships with them too. Um, because we want the Holy Spirit to be a part of that relationship. It's all about the common good. The Holy Spirit is about the common good, which is another way of saying it's all about God's glory common good of the church is about God's glory. And so we want the Holy Spirit to indwell in us into all of our nooks and crannies, into all of our watertight compartments. Um, we want to get rid of the rottenness, all for God's glory. Amen. So the Holy Spirit um, needs to be manifested between us.
And that's the takeaway. The same Holy Spirit on Pentecost, the same Holy Spirit that keeps the tides on schedule, is the same one that can build relationships between us that also builds our relationship with our Lord at the same time. So what are our takeaways from today? I think the first one is uh, from Psalms. May my praise be pleasing to him. As for me, I shall rejoice in the Lord. Let that be something that we all take away. The next one. The only, lim- the only limitations of what the Holy Spirit can do and through us is our own willingness to say yes and fully receive it, grab onto it. The next takeaway God says that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. That includes you, if you're willing to receive the gift. Next one, be Christ-like and empty yourself that the Holy Spirit may reign in you. And then lastly, each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. What is your gift? Are you applying them for the common good of the church? And that should have been capital C Church, not so much our local body. But are you applying it for God's glory and the greater good of his kingdom? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for the Holy Spirit. We're so grateful for the order that you bring. Lord, if you did turn your face away from us and we fell into disorder, disarray, it would be terrifying. It would be terrifying if the sun never rose and the tides quit and um, just terrifying. Lord, please, please do not turn your face from us. We are not worthy of your, your glance. Uh, this world has become so wicked and devoid of you, but Holy Spirit, enter us, use us, empty us, Help us fulfill your will in this community, in this region, in the world. Lord, we just want to be your vessel. Fill us up and then send us out. And we just praise you and thank you for this day. Pray that this message would take root. It would lead to change. It would lead to a desire to draw closer to you. And we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So your blessing for today is this. Open all the compartments of your heart and let the Holy Spirit reign.